Welcome to the channel and welcome to this combat patrol mission which will see these Necrons face off against the Imperial Guard. This is a very small uh, battle here. This is 335 points apiece. At a glance, I honestly feel like the Necrons get more for their money, if you like. I've used these guys quite a few times before in other videos. Feel free to check them out. They are absolutely lethal in close combat. It's a long time since I've played as an Imperial Guard or Astra Militarum, so I'm kind of looking forward to playing them. First off, let's introduce the teams and see what each bring to the table. First off, we have the Necrons, and they are from the dynasty Nefrech. What that does is it gives them translocation beams, first of all, so all of them get a 6-up invulnerable save. They also, if they want to, instead of advancing and rolling a d6, they basically, basically just add 6 to their movement characteristic, and they can do that through uh, buildings and through terrain and through other models, actually. So, yeah, these guys are potentially very rapid. The uh, Necron Warlord is this overlord here. Uh, he has the ability in the command phase to uh, make a unit within 9 inches of his unit add 1 to their attack hit rolls. Uh, so that's potentially very dangerous. He gets a 4 up invulnerable save. And if he is in 6 inches of friendlies, they can add like 1 inch to their move characteristics. Uh, something ridiculous like that. He hits everything on 2s. He's got... A good close combat weapon, that hyperphase glaive does D3 damage, it gives him plus 2 strength. The weapon that you see there is uh, just this ridiculous weapon, what's it called? Tachyon Arrow. He can only fire that once per battle. It's strength 12, D6 damage, minus 5 AP. Absolutely ridiculous. I will say though that I have used it before in other games, and uh, let's just say it never hit what it was shooting at. And it was only allowed to shoot once, so yeah. Uh, these are Scorpec Destroyers, for those who aren't familiar with, the, with them. These are absolutely lethal in close combat. They have an 8-inch move. They'll get more if they're next to uh, the Overlord. What else? They get a base level 3 attacks each with those big weapons. Um, the Reap Blade, the one on the right, does 3 damage every time it gets through. Uh, oh, you can reroll hit rolls of 1 as well. That's a real, real cool... <laughs> hardwired for destruction and that is absolutely ridiculous so yeah these guys they're just going to be scurrying up the field to um hit stuff and probably kill it the troop choice uh we have just necron warriors here uh i gave them all gauss flares sorry um you've, despite what the models look like so basically got 24 inch range rapid fire one so what i'm going to do for uh infantry units on both sides is I'm actually going to let them split up into fives. There's actually only nine models there because I chopped one of my Necron Warriors up uh, to do another video with the uh, like choose your own adventure ones. You can have a look for them elsewhere on the channel. So that's the army, that's the Necrons. That's 335 points of them. Next up, let's have a look at my uh, Imperial Guard list here. So first off, we have our Warlord. He is a Lord Commissar, he's got a Power Sword and a Plasma Pistol, pretty standard stuff. Um, if an enemy, or if a friendly unit within 6 inches fails a morale test, uh, you can basically execute a model and then re-roll the test if you like. To be honest, I don't think I'd want to do that, uh, but units can use his leadership as well when they are uh, near him. So that's pretty good. Uh, he gets a 3 attacks, he's got 4 wounds, he's only toughness 3 and he does have an invulnerable of five up he's still just a little piddly human though isn't he so yeah we're gonna see how he's gonna fare uh against these guys infantry again i'm gonna let this what is a 10-man squad actually uh split up into two five people squads just to make it more interesting uh we've got an auto cannon because i love auto cannons the rest is just fairly vanilla las guns over here we've got a sergeant and we've got a guy with a grenade launcher um for some reason, the the battle scribe wouldn't let me give him a grenade launcher. It wanted me to. It was like saying you have to take a sniper rifle. Uh, I don't know if that's a new rule or something, but yeah, I'm giving him a grenade launcher because I want to have the choice. 
all the way back here uh we've got a WYSIWYG. what you see is what you get uh lehman rust this is the first time i tried to paint a tank with contrast paint to be honest i don't really like it i think i'd stick to airbrushes like i've done with my blood angels vehicles anyway yeah what we got this is the variant as the lehman rust exterminator it's got twin linked auto cannons exterminator auto cannon that's strength seven doing four shots to two damage each it's got heavy flamer coming out the front which is pretty odd <laughs> against necrons but sometimes i like just putting unusual weapons against you know not perfectly suited enemies just to see what happens uh what else multi melters on the sponsons they were 50 points so pretty expensive to be honest it has a pretty cool rule that i've just realized uh called grinding advance so basically if you stay still or if you uh move half or less of your movement characteristic then actually you can shoot your turret weapon twice i kind of wish that i'd put a battle cannon on it actually in retrospect but there you go so overall uh i feel like the necrons it's like new codex sort of syndrome isn't it i feel like new, the necrons are basically gonna probably absolutely clean up here however um the humans do have defenders of humanity as a special rule which means that if they are on an objective, even if they uh, are outnumbered, they actually count as having uh, as holding the objective. So these guys could actually do some, uh, you know, good objective holding, um, even if there's more Necrons there or if they're the only one left or something like that, you know. So yeah, let's go ahead and find out what mission we're going to play. For this match, we're going to be playing the Eternal War Combat Patrol mission, Incisive Attack. Two forces have dug in and fought to a stalemate, adopting a new approach to the war. Opportunistic bands of warriors now venture forth into no man's land to seize vital ground and defeat the enemy with surgical assaults across the fronts. So in this mission, if you control an objective marker at the end of your command phase, it remains under your control, even if you have no models within range of it, unless your opponent controls it at the end of any subsequent phase. Okay, something to get our head around again. Um, so, primary objectives, take and hold at the end of each player's command phase, the player whose turn it is scores five victory points. If... They control one or more, they control two or more, they control more objectives. Secondary objective, um, Surgical Assault, score five victory points if you control the objective market in your opponent's deployment zone at the end of your turn. Okay, okay. so I'm just going to play single secondary objectives because honestly there's so much to remember. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to get too caught up on that. Um, here we go, so I'm basically playing with a, a pretty narrow table. But with that layout of objective objectives so let's see what that looks like for our battlefield and that's basically how it looks there you can see my uh fairly long and narrow table that i've uh, decided to use here um yeah a little desert scene with some objectives there here and there and basically each team's going to start at one in each end i'm going to say i'm going to put the imperial guard this end and necrons this end um, in fact, no, with the pyramid here, we'll put the Necrons this end, Imperial Guard this end. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead. We'll roll off and see who deploys first. So we'll have blue for the humans and black for the Necrons, and the highest will deploy second. So humans will deploy first. So uh, Imperial Guard deployment is done. Um, I've basically put the uh, Lehman Russ over here. Uh, to just basically rain fire on things. He's not way at the back just so that you know He can get his multi melters in uh, as much as possible uh, Over here. We have the uh, heavy weapons team. That's just gonna rain some uh, fire on the rest of the field as much as they can um, They've also got the commissar here. I'm not entirely sure what my plan is with the commissar there, but he's there <laughs> and here we have some sorry souls and these guys are basically going to be the guys who uh have to go off and try and claim these objectives which one it'll be i'm not entirely sure but that's what the imperial guard looks like after deployment deployment complete for the necrons uh, basically life is a lot simpler for the necrons here because they don't have much in the way of like stand back and shoot stuff so they don't have anything to protect really so they're just gonna go and march off ahead someone's gonna have to stay behind and defend that 
But in terms of the other objectives up there, you know, we're basically just going to go ahead and march all the way up there. And <laughs> that's life. We've got the Necromorris in front screening the Scorpex Destroyers. Uh, we got this guy here. He's basically going to try and use his uh, Tachyon weapon to try and pop that tank over there uh, as soon as he can. Cool. So again, I'm going to roll off and we're going to see who's going to go first. So uh, highest will go first, basically. Uh, blue for people, black for robots. And people go first. Score one for the Imperial Guard. Best of luck, boys. So yeah, just gonna go ahead and carry out turn one with the uh, the intentions that I had for my uh, dudes. Cool. So after movement, let's see what we look like. Uh, over here we have <laughs> he's being tactical, not cowardly, honest. Uh, we have our commissar. He's basically trying to stay out of line of sight of anyone who might try and pop off at him. Whilst also potentially being in range to jump on that. He is the warlord. He's the toughest uh, Imperial Guardsman on the battlefield. So yeah. Back here we basically uh, stood still. Auto cannon is probably in range. So just going to go ahead and uh, do some stuff to those guys over there hopefully. Um, trying to soften things up before it becomes probably a horrible meaty clash. These guys took cover here. Um, yeah, I think they might be in range of, like, anybody, so, um, yeah, that's what those guys are there for. And this, uh, did move up its, uh, half its range, so it can shoot its, uh, main turret weapon first. Also conscious that, uh, he needs to get his multi-melters in range as well. So, yeah, that's what we're looking like for, uh, turn one movement for the Imperial Guard. In 9th edition, you can't shoot an enemy character if it's within like 3 inches, I think, of uh, some, you know, friendly units. So, basically, Lehman Russ is going to put uh, everything, that's its auto cannons and its uh, multi-melters, if they're in range, into uh, these guys here. So, I said before, I butchered one of my Necron Warriors. There's actually five here, so we'll have to remember that. Very first shooting of the match, and we hit on fours with the auto cannon. Good shooting to be honest. We're going to be wounding on threes. Minus one AP for these, so the Necron Warriors four ups become five ups. And they're both failed. Having one wound each, uh, he's basically managed to take two out here. I'm just going to have that as a proxy model that's dead. So, right, now we've got the multi melters going in. Let's check for range first. 24 inches, how we're looking. Whoops. So there's 12, and then. Let's move it around. Yeah, we're only just in range. Look at that. So yeah, two multi melters going in, and then we're going to shoot the auto cannon again. Multi melters. Um, I, they're two shots now. I'm sure there used to be one uh, hitting on fours. Only one of them wounding on a two. That's wounded. Minus four AP for that means that um, basically no save for the Necrons here. Let's do D6 damage just as a. <laughs> yeah, so that would have been four wounds taken off him, and that is pretty good shooting. Let's go back to the auto cannon because it only shot once, hitting on fours. Uh, two of them, okay. Wounding on threes, both wounded, and now this unit could be wiped out here. We need five ups for the Necrons. One pass, one fail. So now I'm going to do for the first time something called the reanimation protocol for the Necrons. Uh, apologies if I get this wrong. My understanding is that for everyone who died, that's four, we roll a d6. On a five up, we go into a, wo a wound pool. I was going to say wound. And for every five up that is in the wound pool, then one is re reanimated. Let's see how many basically wounds go back in the wound pool for that unit. Uh, one. They get one wound each, so I think that uh, one of them comes back. Uh, let me know if I get that totally wrong there. There is the, totally the chance that that is the case. Everybody else is out of range except for the auto cannon. So the auto cannon is going to put his two shots into these, uh, what are they called? Necron warriors over here. Uh, we're going to be hitting on fours and re-rolling ones because we stayed still and we are Cadians. Okay, so one hit. We're going to be wounding on threes as before. Oh, that wasn't good. And with that, what did we lose? We just lost basically three Necron Warriors. I mean, there's a tank on the field and a heavy weapon. I feel like they should have killed more. 
Let's go ahead and see what happens after Necron movement turn one. So here we are after Necron movement. Uh, they basically took advantage of their like crazy teleporty ability. I can't rem remember what it's called as part of their dynasty. Um, I was kind of I kind of felt like things were not exactly how I'd prefer them to be as the Necron player. I would rather have these guys on this flank so they could come and hit this tank. But I actually have this guy, and I'd rather have this guy over there, so he could go and basically take on the Commissar, and then maybe, maybe mangle up some of these guys. So, I basically just advanced everyone forward. I didn't advance these guys. These guys are basically existing there. Um, they're basically taking up cover there to shoot anyone who comes within range, and also, more importantly, to basically score this objective here. So that is that. I'm going to see if anyone's in shooting range for my uh, Necron guys at the back. So just as I planned when I moved my uh, Imperial Guard Commissar, he's totally not visible behind that obelisk. He's well hidden, waiting. Not hiding, waiting. <laughs> but who is in range uh, for them is uh, these guys over there, the infantry behind that. So uh, we're actually going to go ahead and uh, shoot what we can at those guys. So Necron Warriors, they're going to be hitting on threes. Absolutely all hit. Wounding on threes. Oh, that wasn't as good. And their uh, Gauss Flares have a minus one AP, which would take them to sixes. However, I'm going to consider this as light cover, and they're right next to it. So uh, fives to save two guys. One saved, one failed. And that was Necron shooting. We basically lost one guy here. I will take a morale test for that. They aren't close enough to the Commissar to use his leadership, so uh, he's going to have a leadership of seven because they do have the sergeants. So, yeah, that's a pass. So, turn two, we're on two. Uh, let's see what the Astra Militarum movement looks like. Only one change, actually, for the Astra Militarum, who are going to basically just sit still and shoot like the Cadians they are. It's a calculated risk, but I basically pulled my uh, Commissar back so he can blend in with those troops and not get shoot at if any shooting is going to happen. But more importantly, to try and not get absolutely sliced to pieces by those guys. It also pushes them into the position that they can't just sort of sit there and have a fight near it. They need to either decide to sit there or actually charge over here, in which case they might get shot at a bit more. Uh, these guys are quite nice and healthily in the open for me to shoot at with my uh, Lehman Rust and my infantry. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that first. These infantry guys are going to put everything they've got into here. I'm thinking three las guns, oh sorry, two las guns, one las pistol and a crack grenade. So after these guys shot, uh, the last guns did nothing, but the crack grenade did uh, take one away. Uh, he did not reanimate. Also because this is less than three units now, or three models, now everyone can basically target this character. It has to be three or more. So basically, the Lehman Rust now is going to put absolutely everything it's got into this Overlord here. The Heavy Flame was actually out of range of the Overlord, but in range of the Necron Warrior. So we're going to go ahead and do D6 shots at him. We're going to have four shots. going to hit on four and re-roll ones because we didn't move. We're going to wound on threes. And um, these need to be five ups to save this little dude. And he's dead. Wound pool test. So um, he's got one wound. So on a five up, basically I think he reanimates. Nope, he does not, and he is out of there. Now the bit we've all been waiting for. I don't feel very confident for this overlord here, but, you know, let's have a go, see what happens. Hitting on fours, re-rolling ones with the auto cannon. Reroll that one. Uh, still no good, okay. Uh, wounding on threes. Only one of them. It's four up and vulnerable now. And it fails. Um, shall I re-roll it? Oh, this is a single damage weapon, I think, is it? Uh, no, it's a two damage weapon. Yeah, I'm going to roll that. So I actually haven't added that one yet. So four up. And it's failed. So two wounds off him. Now down to three wounds. It's kind of not looking good because what's going to happen now is uh, loads of multi melters are going to go into him, basically. So multi melters now. I'm still yet to do the uh, shooting twice because he didn't move with that thing on the top. So uh, we're going to be hitting on fours, re rolling ones. Wow, really good shooting there. 
Wounding on threes. Uh oh. <laughs> and he gets his four up on vulnerable uh, as he phases in and out of reality. And two fail. I've actually already done my reroll attempt, so I actually can't take those. The multi melter does d6 damage, so I basically, as the Necron player here, I need snake eyes. Let's see what we get. Wow, four wounds off. That is him out of there. So I think the wound pool for him will work like we get, he's got five wounds, so what, we get five dice, and on a five, these go into his wound pool. So these all need to be fives, I think, for him to reanimate. That's not gonna happen. <gasps> it nearly happened. Big loss for the Necrons there, as they lose their Warlord. Really big loss. Um, so, but I mean, you know, it's a Lehman Rust. That's what it's there to do, isn't it? Um, so next turn, this kind of opens things up here for the Imperial God to move through. Now we've just got the small matter of the Scorpec Destroyers to deal with. So I think we'll put everything that we've got over here into them. So uh, I've measured and actually the Commissar's out of range, so can't shoot. I did all the last gun shooting, nothing happened. I did all the auto cannon shooting, nothing happened. So, uh, as we go on to the uh, Necrons turn 2, we've got some basically gleaming Scorpex destroyers here, just wanting to slice and dice, and uh, some Necrons back here. Yeah, I should say that um, Imperial Guard scored 5 victory points by uh, holding this 1. So yeah, let's count things for Necrons as we go to their turn 2. So the Necrons here uh, have used the that guy protocol <laughs> and basically have uh, used their what's it like that teleportation ability to max out their moves so they can't shoot but they have spread out to basically be within range of uh, both objectives only just but it's happening uh, very calculated and robotic there these guys here the uh, Scorpec destroyers have basically just moved up uh, all they want to do is hello get into these guys if they do that then they can not be shot at basically if they're in close combat they can after they've killed them if they kill them uh, they will be able to slice and dice into other things and also get this secondary objective, which is actually in the enemy's deployment zone. So yeah, just giving themselves options there. I wonder if they'll get into close combat. Let's find out what they need to charge. So having measured it, they only need to get a 5 really to get in, um, to hit over the, the top of that terrain to get in. So let's see what they get. Yeah, they are well in. Craggy. The uh, Scorpic Destroyers, they're in combat and not looking good for the Guardsmen. So my ba absolute butchery is about to ensue, so uh, let's roll some dice. So first off, the guys with the Threshers, that's the ones with one in each hand. Normally get three attacks, they get an extra one. They're going to be hitting on threes. Uh, each of these will wound on a three. All of them, wow. Bad news for the Guardsmen, these are minus three AP. So that's uh, <laughs> it's two damage. So yeah, basically all of those guardsmen are dead. And the guy with the big, big old weapon hasn't even swung it yet. And those guardsmen are out of there. I had to do quite a bit of measuring, but uh, this was probably like three millimeters, not the closest uh, enemy. So I wanted to consolidate towards the tank, but the rules say you've got to consolidate towards the nearest enemy. Uh, so they basically, that's them. That's these guys here. The unfortunate little cookies that they are. With that, let's move on to Imperial Guard turn three. So, uh, turn three movement done for the Imperial Guard. The Lehman Rus has uh, just stayed there because he's going to put everything he's got into them. This is basically make or break. If this unit is allowed free reign in this deployment zone, then it's basically all she wrote for the Imperial Guard, I think. Um, the guard here moved away so as to allow things to shoot at these guys. Also, um, he's put himself in a position where he can shoot and if needed, charge if the Lehman's Rush's shots don't do what they need to do. I'm aware that these guys are scoring lots of points over here, but honestly, the whole thing hinges on these. So we're going to do our... Um, Commissar's single shot with a pistol first. He hits on a two. He hits 
That's good news. He wounds on a three because he didn't overcharge. Yes, he wounds. Minus three AP. However, these guys have uh, invulnerable, don't they? They got a six up invulnerable. So uh, one of these guys needs to make a six now. And hasn't done. Single damage, unfortunately. So um, kind of fortunately for the guard, one of these is down to two wounds. Purely out of morbid curiosity now, the... Uh, the Lehman Russ is going to put its heavy flamer into those guys. And we're going to have D6 shots. Whoa! Doesn't get better than that, one, guys. Okay, so. D6 shots, and we're going to be hitting on fours, re-rolling ones. Pretty good. I'm glad these are ones. Oh. <laughs> on fours. Failed. See Melter now. Uh... Hitting on fours, re-rolling ones. This is all, both of them going in. Nice, that's good. Wounding on threes. Okay, I'm going to command point that. <laughs> and it's lots AP means they have to use their six up invulnerables. This is good news, to be honest. Uh, they've all failed their six up invulnerables. Multi-melters do D6 damage. So, this could be really good. <laughs> so the first one d6 six he's dead or at least he's getting his wounds re-rolled in a minute the second one they have three wounds each he is also dead wow final one all he needs one to ruin a party by the way <sighs> he's also dead so now we're going to do the reanimation protocol for what? Three, six, nine wounds. And for every three, five ups, one of them will come back. So basically, the whole thing hinges on this. I'm so glad the Lehman Rust did so well there. Um, let's see how many wounds end up back in the pool. Five ups. One, two, uh, three, four, and then an extra wound stays in the wound pool that's interesting so yeah one of these guys reanimates however auto cannon now and that will get to shoot twice because it didn't move so uh let me know if i'm getting those rules with the reanimation wrong by the way um there's totally a chance um we're looking at fours reroll ones good times threes to wound um that's looking good. What's this? Minus one AP, so they get a four up save. That's one wound off this Scorpex Destroyer. Let's do the uh, shooting again, because he didn't move. Hitting on fours, we're rolling ones. Oh, that's not very good. Oh, actually, two seconds. No, he's on one wound, actually, because they take two wounds off the auto cannon. Um, so, what did I just do? Wounding. So, wounding on threes. That successfully got through. It's a minus one AP. The score, he to save himself needs a four up, and he's got it. Uh oh. So at the end of uh, Imperial Guard shooting, he, there's one of these beasts <laughs> left on one wound right in the deployment zone of the um, Imperial Guard. And now, which I think is quite fitting, it's all going to hinge on this Commissar who's going to have to try and charge the Scorpec Destroyer. He only needs uh, four to get into combat. Let's see how we do. He is in there. Come on. <laughs> What's he going to do? Is he going to do anything? I hope so. Come on, Sunshine. Three attacks. He's hitting on twos. <laughs> That's not good. Okay, two. He's wounding on fives. This is difficult. Yes! Come on! And hallelujah, I didn't realize power swords have a minus three AP. So this uh, Scorpec Destroyer is going to need to do this again in order to stay alive. Come on, what are we on? Um, sixes. <laughs> and with that, that is again dead. But wait! The wound pool. Don't forget the wound pool. So there's already one wound left in the wound pool. Uh, if two of these are five ups, he comes back. No. Only one did. And that's not enough to bring that back. 
And so, what a hero. What an absolute hero this guy is. Honestly, even though he's hiding before, what a hero. So at the end of Imperial Guard turn, uh, what is it, three. What an absolute fantastic performance by the guard. Honestly, playing to their strengths with the Lehman Russ and the Commissar. And, oh, people running away. Beautiful. <laughs> it's all part of the grand plan. Uh, so now we're going to move on to Necrons turn two. And they score five, ten uh, objective points, so which puts them on 20. Bear in mind the guard are only on 10 right now. Having seen uh, this puny flesh vessel kill their flipping greatest hope, basically, uh, they are going to shoot at him. Uh, three of them are in range. They're going to do shoot twice because they didn't move. Uh, they're going to hit on threes. They're also going to wound on threes. Mr. Commissar over there has uh, four up in vulnerables, so let's see how that goes. Ooh, two failed. That's a bit of a shame. Uh, those weapons only do one damage each, so he is left on two wounds. There we go. That was turn three for the Necrons done. Now we're going to move on to turn four for the Imperial Guard. And they've only got this turn and the next turn to score enough victory points uh, to actually win it. So I think the best shot that the Imperial Guard have is to actually just try and table their opponents. So, um, they've stayed still, so they can shoot that auto cannon. He has stayed still, so he can hold that objective. It's not perfect, but someone needs to be on it. Uh, I actually got the, the points for the Necrons wrong. They should have actually had an extra 5 points. So they're on 25 to 15 for the Imperial Guard now, because they held more than the opponent. The Lehman Rus has moved up here, so that basically in the next turn, turn 5, They'll actually own two. They might own more than the opponent as well. Uh, so, yeah, it's actually going to be a close one in the end, surprisingly, given that yeah, we'll have to see if they get tabled or not, to be honest. So, yeah, let's go into shooting. Oh, Heavy Flamer first. I realized I was made a mistake before. I was rolling D6, but then I was rolling to hit. You just need to real, roll D6, and they automatically hit. So, two hits. Moving on threes. That's one AP, so Necrons need a five-up save failed um so i think i need to roll five or more for him to see if he reanimates he does not reanimate next we're gonna go multi melders four shots gonna be hitting on fours wow very high ap on these so basically like incinerating on uh fours as well no incinerating on twos Wow, really good. Minus four AP. Oh, they get their invulnerable, don't they? So they get a six up invulnerable. Uh, that's all failed. So three of them dead. One, two, three. Let's see if they reanimate. There's one in their pool. So yeah, one of them does reanimate, actually. There he is. And now finally, this has been a very useful tank, this battle, to be honest. The uh, auto cannon. We're looking at four shots. We are going to hit on fours. Two. Oh, I'm going to command point that. Fours. Yes. We need threes to wound. Oof. Only a minus one AP. That uh, basic, basically means the Necron Warriors get a five up save. And that's passed. No way. It's going to be very hard. For this one remaining auto cannon, which is not very well painted, uh, to finish this, which is interesting. So let's see what the auto cannon can do back there. We're looking for fours to hit, reroll the ones. <sighs> Hasn't done it at all, even slightly. Wow, that's the end of the Imperial Guards <laughs> turn, I think. I expected the, them to be dead, to be honest. Oh well, cool. Let's move on to Necron's turn four. Necron's turn four, and uh, they've got 30 points. They've got two guys left. Um, what are they going to do? Do you know what it is? They're going to shoot at the Lehman Ross. Uh, the shooting did absolutely nothing. I spared you that. Uh, so now we move on to Imperial Guard turn five, and to the last round of the battle. Everyone has stayed still. He's going to get two shots with his auto cannon. Let's do them now. We're going to be hitting on 
fours, we roll in ones, we roll one, okay, so we're going to be wounding on threes, okay, two of them, and we're going to be saving for the Necrons on fives, so they both failed, the unit is destroyed, they are out of there, I think I should probably do the reanimation check, so one of them has reanimated, <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's do that so he gets to shoot again uh let's do that four shots hitting on fours we're on ones wounding on four threes one of them saving on a five plus no save reanimate no and finally and i should say that the pure god got five ten and fifteen which would put them 30 as well as the Necrons, but they've just tabled the Necrons. So at the end of that We have a actually I'm totally surprised <laughs> uh, Imperial Guard victory well done to the guard. That was a pretty good game. I actually really enjoyed playing that uh, Hopefully hope that comes across in the video. I expected the Necrons to just run across and absolutely clean up to be honest. So having used these guys before in my 40k face-off videos and another battle report I did for the command edition box i didn't think there was i've never been able to counter them until now you basically just got to make sure they are not in combat with them and shoot the living daylights out of them so yeah it came down to the the rust in the end really didn't it that was that was the the decider and the commissar did so well as well i feel so proud of him <laughs> he's a kind of measly 45 point commissar uh, just absolutely took the first wound off these guys and just bossed the show, didn't he? Okay, right. Well, that's been a battle report from Peacetime Painting. I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you have done, please subscribe and hit like and do all that jazz. Uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed watching and take care of yourselves.